Okay, section 10.3 is two more counting strategies. We're going to look at two more counting strategies. So uh, in section 10.1, we did counting by systematic lists. It's okay for small things, right? It's not maybe even the best way to do small things, but it's okay. Uh, the second one that we learned in section 10.2 was the fundamental principle of counting. So we have these objects repeated. But we also found out that there's some weird things that happen with things like committees that don't really quite follow the right structure. So this text, section 10.3 is going to encounter two more ways of counting strategies. One of them is called permutations and the other one's called combinations, okay? So what we're gonna look at for this point of the lesson today is just what those formulas are and we're gonna talk a little bit of how they structurally work and then we'll do some actual word problems of how they work next time. So permutations is first. A permutation is the number of arrangements of n things taken r at a time. So you'll notice on the formula, it's got these little subscripts. There's a subscript n sort of in front of p and a subscript r after p. The n factorial is on the top and then the n minus r factorial is on the bottom. And that's almost something we saw in 10.2. We almost saw that exact formula. It was really close to that. Um, and there's a key, it says at the bottom here, that the key thing to remember is with permutation, order does matter. Now, you saw things in section 10.1 where the order of something mattered. Right? It mattered when we did the president, secretary, treasurer, if the president and the treasurer switched spots, right? It was a different role that they had to play. Therefore, the order mattered in which role they were in. So when the order matters, you've got something that falls in line with what's called a permutation. The other option is that we had like our committee. In our committee, the order didn't matter, and we had to do some division sort of thing because we had to remove some double counts, right? So when order doesn't matter, it's called a combination. Okay, the order does not matter. So a combination is the number of subsets of n things taken r at the time. That part looks very similar. We've got a C happening, right, instead of a P. C for combination instead of P for permutation. But what do you notice on the right-hand side of the equal sign that's different. There's an additional piece in the denominator, right? An R factorial. This is actually the formula that we saw sort of pop up in the middle of section 10.2. N factorial on the top. I have N minus R factorial on bottom and R factorial on bottom. Okay, I want to set the stage for our problem. We have two problems that are coming up next, problems one and two, and then we're going to stop. Both of them say 12 and 3, right? If you have it printed out, you see that. There's a 12 in the front, there's a 3 at the back, and here's the difference. So let's imagine that you're going out to eat. You've got a whole bunch of friends, 12 to be precise. Your car will not tolerate 12 people, right? You can't take all 12 of them, but you're all going to take one car. You're going to take three people with you. 12 is the number of people you're choosing from. Three is the number of people you choose. Are you with me? Okay. So there's 12 people to pick from, and there's three people who are going to get chosen. Now, in the first case, the order matters. That's what the P means. The order is going to matter in which you choose them. Maybe because there's a preferable location to sit in your car. I don't know. I don't have a real good example of why. But there's some reason that the order matters that you chose the people. The second one, combinations, the order doesn't matter at all. It doesn't matter who got picked first and who got picked third. They all got to go with you to eat. Okay, everybody with me? We're going to actually calculate this, and it's going to look a lot like what we calculated in section 10.2. 
on the top, I have the larger and the first number, 12 factorial. And on the bottom, I'm supposed to take the 12 that's the beginning, and I'm going to subtract the 3 that's at the end. So this is 12 factorial on top and 9 factorial on bottom. So what is it actually doing? Well, 12 factorial is the number of different ways you could have chosen 12 people, correct? That, that's what 12 factorial means. But the 9 factorial are the 9 people that didn't get a go. It doesn't matter who would have been chosen fourth. They didn't get a go. And it doesn't matter who's chosen last. They didn't get a go either. It doesn't matter how you would have chosen the order of the last nine people because none of them are going with you to dinner. Are you with me? Now, that's different on the next one. On the next one, I still have the 12 factorial. I still have the 12 minus 3 factorial, the nine people who don't get a go. But I also have the 3 factorial on the bottom. So on this one, I have my 12 factorial on top. I have my 9 factorial on bottom, but I have a 3 factorial as well. The 9 people who don't get a go, it doesn't matter how I would have picked them. But the 3 people who get a go, it doesn't matter how I picked them either. They still get a go. So we're going to do this real quick. This is 12, 11, 10, and 9 factorial to cancel with my 9 factorial. If you were to put this in your calculator, I promise you you're going to get 1,020, uh, 1,320. And on the second one, you should get something smaller because you have an additional thing in the denominator that you're dividing by, right? 12, 11, 10, and 9 factorial. And then I have 3, 2, and 1. This is a pretty good example of if you just wanted to multiply the top and then divide by the 3 times 2 is 6 in the bottom, that's okay. But you could also reduce it. 3 and 2 cancel with the 12 to give me a 2. And if I multiply these together, I get 220. So among my 12 friends, there are 1,320 ways, if the order matters, to make a grouping of them. But there's only 220 ways to do it if I don't care what order I pick those three people to go with me to dinner in. Make sense? Okay, we'll stop there for today.